Today I'm going to bring you guys a reaction video on a topic that's been hot in the credit industry for quite some time, and that is business credit. Now you guys that have been following me for a while know that I am a staunch critic of business funding, and not just business funding as the category itself, but the way that it's marketed and the way that it's sold. So what we're going to do right now is take a look at a video from London Business as Usual that to this point has over 350,000 views on YouTube, claiming that he's going to tell you about five banks that will give you over $50,000 in business funding with no income. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite voice on credit, just Jay Woodfin from jwoodfin.com. Of the credit repair industry's most complete and comprehensive DIY credit repair service. We use no template letters ever. My truly AI driven DIY system is the only DIY system in the market that uses machine learning to create your dispute letters from your credit report. What does that mean to you? Every single credit report it reads, it learns from, using all the information from those credit reports to create more customized letters than it ever did before. Which means you only have a 0.04% chance of getting the same verbiage in your dispute letter as anybody else who's ever used the system before. Simply put, every time you make a letter, it gets smarter. That's real AI. Now this ain't some sort of experimental or affiliate product that I'm pushing here. I got a 25% ownership stake in this company. This is mine. Since launching this technology in September of 2022, to this point, we've sent over 150,000 letters to the credit bureau. To top it all off, my DIY system is so advanced that you ain't even gotta print, stuff, stamp, or even go to the post office and mail your letters. We'll do it for you as long as you pay for the certified postage. Now, what other DIY system do you know that can do it all? If you want to learn more about my DIY system, just feel free to click the link in the description. It'll also be pinned to the top of the chat. Now, if you can't seem to find it, you can always go to jwilfin.com forward slash social and get it there. Now, let's go. Listen to this. I'm going to give you five banks that's going to get your new LLC $50,000 in business funding with little to no proof of income. Sounds too good to be true? I know it does. So let's grab right into it. Now, notice I said business funding and not business credit, because this is one of the biggest misconceptions out there when it comes to getting any type of funding from these financial institutions. So in the previous video, I break down what is business credit and what is business funding. I leave, I leave that in the description below, but I'll give you a quick synopsis on what I mean. So business credit is where we take our brand new business or an established business, and we're going to go to other companies and open up lines of credit with those companies. Now you might've heard of these companies before, Cranger, Grill, Uline, et cetera. Now with these particular companies, we very limited because we only can use that line of credit at that particular stores. And we only focus on our vendor trade lines and supplier trade lines, AKA the only business credit bureau that we focus on is our AD pay that score. So what he's trying to do here is actually establish himself as a knowledgeable authority in the business credit industry. And I understand why he's trying to do that. The more information you can give, the better off you're going to sound. But the reality is, is that companies like Granger, Office Depot, Uline, Home Depot, those are still business funding options. Those are funded lines of credit, which means you can actually use the money that's on those credit lines to shop at those vendors. So this is still a form of business funding, but what he's talking about is not a universal form of funding that you can spend anywhere. But don't get it confused. Every single one of these lines, whether he's talking about a line of credit from Chase or American Express or Uline or uh, Office Depot or Home Depot, they are all lines of credit. They are all funding. There is no difference. Let's continue. And news flash people breaking news right now. You haven't heard this from anyone else. You're going to hear it from me. Lenders, bankers, creditors, any financial institution out there do not care about your pay that score. Now you can have an 80 pay that score. You can have all the way up to a hundred pay that score. You can ask any lender or creditor or any financial institution in the U S do they care about your 80 pay that score? Do they check your Dun and Brad, which is connected to your 80 pay that score. That's how you generate it in order to qualify you for funding. They're going to tell you unequivocally, no. So let's stop focusing on our pay that score and let's focus on other data points and other factors that's actually going to get us business funding. Speaking of business funding, what is business funding then? Since business credit is different. Well, business funding is when you leverage your brand new business or an established business. You're also going to leverage the business owner credit, AKA your personal credit. You're going to put the two together or then you're going to go get the bank's money. So I like that at this point in the video, he's actually decided to broach the topic of personal credit, which is hyper important when trying to achieve universal business funding of any kind. And that doesn't mean just credit cards, but business loans as well. To institutions and get lines of credit and business lines of credit and credit lines with the banks, right? Notice I said funding because funding is money. 95% of business funding is predicated off your personal credit. 
the business owner credit. So your personal credit, yes, it has to be in position. Don't let anyone tell you anything different that you can go to any bank, right, any financial institution and get business lines of credit or business credit lines with these financial institutions without leveraging your personal credit. It's not going to happen. Now, obviously there's different strategies around it. Maybe if you have the revenue, but most new LLC, let's be honest, you guys are not making any money yet and that's fine. You're a brand new LLC, you haven't figured it out yet. So we want, look, let me be clear. As a new LLC, as a small business owner, correct me if I'm wrong, but we wanna get the money the easiest way and the fastest way, right? I know you do because I do. So we have to put ourselves in a position how can we do that? So that's what we're going to break it down. So what he just went over right there kind of reminds me about a saying, and I can't remember exactly off the top of my head who said it, but there's a way of doing business and it's either going to be fast, cheap, or good. Not all three. If it's fast and cheap, it ain't going to be good. If it's fast and good, it ain't going to be cheap. If it's good and cheap, it ain't going to be fast. So when talking about going in for funding, if it comes fast and it comes easy, it ain't going to be cheap which means it's gonna be super costly in the form of interest rates and payments back. Or you can think about it the other way, right? If it's gonna be cheap and fast, it ain't gonna be easy to get. I'll tell you today, the five banks, now there's more banks out there, but there's a method to my madness why I'm getting you these particular banks that you can go to and get business lines of credit, get credit lines without showing any documentations. I'm not gonna explain the reason why, right? But let me explain why is this possible, that you can go to these financial institutions and get these credit lines without showing no proof of income. So one day, these lenders was just in a big room, just picture them in a big room having a conference. And they, you know, they, 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 they conversing, stating, hey, how can we get new LOCs, self-employees, entrepreneurs, small business owners, how can they qualify for some of our products and their services? Because we understand that most of these new LOCs, most of these small business owners, they don't get paid the traditional way, right? Most don't have bank statements. Most don't have um, tax returns. They haven't filed their taxes. If you're out there, you probably haven't filed your taxes, be honest. Uh, most probably don't have any P&L statements, which is profit and loss statements, any cash flow statements, any balance sheets, meaning you don't have any financial documentations because one, you probably just starting out, or two, you just don't know how to do it. Plain and simple. So they came out with a product that's called. If it's number two, you do not belong in business. Now, if it's number one and you just starting out and things are not quite all the way together yet, that's a whole different excuse of why you have not been able to do things the proper way. But it should be coming over time. If you've been in business for a couple of years or more and you don't have all those other ducks in a row that he was just talking about, something else is inherently wrong. Stated income loans or stated income business credit cards, which means you can state your income. Let me say that again. So if you have a business and you're making zero dollars in your business monthly or annually, you can put that you're making a hundred thousand dollars and they're going to take your word for it. Now, you might be asking yourself, how is this possible? Well, a few reasons. Number one it's called projected income. So when you fill out that business credit application and they ask you how much revenue have you made in your business, you freeze up. You're like, man, I haven't made any revenue in my business. I don't want to lie because I can commit bank fraud or this can be like considered identity theft. So you don't want to get those ramifications as far as jail time or a fee. He didn't mean identity theft. He meant straight up bank fraud. This is not identity theft. You're still doing business as you. He, he mistakenly said identity theft. He meant you don't want to be accused of bank fraud if you lie on the business credit applications. So you freeze up and you put zero, now you automatically get denied. Here's what you can do. Did you know you could put $100,000 even if you haven't made $100,000 in your business yet? Why? Because it's something that's called projected income. Say it with me, projected income, which means you could project, AKA you can guesstimate or estimate how much your business is gonna make for that particular year. Okay, okay, okay. This is where I'm going to have to call them to the front of the congregation. That's not the way stated business loans work at all. Stated income business loans, yes, do not ask you to produce any W-2 information or they don't ask you to produce any, uh, uh, any, any documentation as far as like what you have been paid over the years. But what it will do, it will ask you to produce information from your current business banking account. 
You have to be able to show the fact that you are currently making money that leads into the projection. So if you're if you say that you're making one hundred thousand dollars a year, they're going to check your business bank account and see, does he have on average eighty three hundred thirty three dollars or whatever the math is coming in? That would lead us to believe that, yes, he will achieve one hundred thousand dollars this year. It is not completely no documentation. You don't just get to tell the bank whatever the hell you want to tell them. There has to be some sort of information supporting the claims that you're making. So this is where it kind of, kind of starts to jump the shark a little bit here. I'm going to let him continue before I decapitate him in public. Because uh, this, is, this is going in a route where it's going to lead people to believe that procuring $50,000 per bank is a possibility when you have not made dime number one yet. So if you think your business is going to make $100,000 based on what? Based on your future revenue, based on your future contracts, based on your future invoice, you could put $100,000 on that business application and be perfectly fine. Right. That's the trick behind it. That's the hack that a lot of people out there don't know. So don't freeze up next time you're filling out that business credit application. Now, now what he said was based on your future contracts. Right. If you are a new business, you don't have future contracts. The way this shit is being sold to you, the public, the consumer, the new business owner is go get your EIN, go get your LLC, go get your business bank account, go get your virtual office address, go procure all these things that are easy to do within a two week time period. Right. And then you can walk into a Navy Federal or a Chase or you can hit up American Express online or Capital One or Citibank or whoever else is offering the funding and just get you 50K. It has to be based on something. If you've been in business long enough to have a product that is good enough or successful enough or a program that is good enough or successful enough that you have procured contracts that need to be fulfilled, that in itself is a form of currency. It's a form of usable future currency. This is not the way this is being sold to you. Pay attention, guys, because the messages are mixed right now. Again, how is this possible besides the state of income? Well, banks only care about two things. Two things. That's it. Number one, your ability to pay them back, which is predicated off your revenue. True. That means we see you're making money. We understand you have the ability to pay us back. Based we see you're making money. How else do they see you're making money? Not by you telling them, by you showing them. How do you show them? Open up the logs of your business banking account. It's on the revenue you stated that you're making. That's number one. Number two, <laughs> your willingness to pay them back, which is based off your personal credit profile and your business credit profile. You see, your willingness to tell the banks, tell these financial institutions your story. So regardless if you have the ability to pay them back, this is why your willingness supersedes your ability because your personal, your business credit profile tells them everything they need to know about you. Your willingness to pay money back will never, ever, ever supersede your ability to pay the money back. It will never. It might be considered alongside of it. It might be considered a little bit less than it. And yes, he's right. It is considered your personal credit and your business credit profile definitely lean towards helping you procure money at a cheaper rate and an easier process. But if you do not show the fact that you are making money, you will not. And I'm saying this definitively. You will not procure business funding of any kind. As a business owner. They're reading your personal, your business credit profile. So which means, do you pay your bills on time? Do you know how to manage debt? How long have you been managing debt, a.k.a. your credit history? Right. Are you constantly looking for credit? Do you have a whole which means do you have a whole bunch of hard inquiries? So your personal, your business credit profile, tell them everything they need to know about you. So which means your ability is like second nature to them because they say, although you have to be making some money somewhere because you're paying your bills on time. So that's why you're able to get away with this, right? 
Now, in this particular portion of his conversation, what he's kind of glossing over here is that they will use your personal W-2 income, if you do have sub substantial personal W-2 income, to consider how well you can pay them back. So that is a portion of things that are, is never really introduced into the guru's talk about how to procure business funding, is that even if you have a brand new LLC, you have a brand new everything, right? If you have a high earning personal wage where you don't have a whole bunch of liabilities. And once again, this is something that you do need to procure for them. What are your liabilities? What are your assets? Because they want to know what they can attach themselves to as a personal guarantor, personal guarantor. I am the person, my assets, my income personally guarantee this loan. If the business fails to pay it back. That's why you're able to fill out this business credit application without any proof of doc financial documentation or any proof of income. See, most people don't tell you that. They tell you to go fill out these business credit applications, but you don't even know why you got approved. So I hope that gave you some clarity on why you got approved. Now, let's, now you have that background. Now you understand why is this possible. Let me give you some banks on, uh, let me give you some banks that you can go to to get approved, which is called stated income business loans or so before he goes into the banks and all this other stuff, and I'll, I'll let it roll. I wasn't going to let it roll through the banks because I don't like putting that information out, but I'll let it go. Um, I, pulled, I put up a list here of the qualifications or the thing, the steps you have to go through in order to procure a no document or a.k.a. stated income business loan. So let's go through them real quick. It's only about seven bullet points. First is the application process. The business owner or borrower fills out a loan application with basic information about the business, such as legal structure, industry, and requested loan amount. Next comes the stated income phase. Instead of providing extensive financial documentation like tax returns, profit loss statements, the borrower states their income or revenue. They provide an estimate of their earnings, which may not be verified through traditional means. Next is the most important part. Number three, the bank statements. While traditional income documents may not be required, some lenders may request bank statements in order to review the cash flow and verify the revenue stated by the borrower. Verifying the revenue stated by the borrower. You can't just tell them shit. There is some sort of verification process here because the banks are not just going to hand out 50, 100, 150K to somebody who they have no idea who the hell you are, which they don't. You're nothing but a number. Several numbers, in fact. Number four, the credit history. The borrower's personal and business credit history will still be considered in the qualification process. A strong credit history improves the chances of approval and may help secure more favorable loan terms. Once again, I told you, this will not be cheap, fast, and easy. It can be two of the three. If you have good personal and good business credit, it can be cheap and it can be fast. But getting good personal and good business credit history is never easy. Number five, a business plan and purpose. Some lenders might ask for a detailed business plan or information about how the loan funds will be used. If you don't have an established proven business or an established proven product for your business, how in the hell can you prove this? See, they're not they're never telling you this in the little short 60 second or three minute videos that you guys are seeing on IG, Facebook or TikTok. LLC, EIM, bank account. A business address. That's all they ever tell you guys. They never tell you about the process that it takes in order to actually show that you are a lendable source for the banking industry. Number six, collateral and down payment. Depending on the lender and the borrower's credit worthiness, collateral or down payment may be required to secure the loan. They don't tell you that part either. Collateral should be business at collateral could be business assets, real estate, or other valuable items that the lender can claim in case of a loan default. This shit ain't free. You have to have some substance about your life that tells these banks they going to get their money back by hook or by crook. Number seven in the last bullet point that I have up here is the interest rates and the terms. No doc, a.k.a. stated business loans often come with higher interest rates and fees compared to traditional business loans. The terms and conditions would vary depending on the borrower's credit worthiness, the lender's policies and the perceived risk associated with the loans. Now, let me ask you one question. If you are a brand new business with limited or bad personal credit history, which one of these gurus can promise you a cheap, fast and good business loan product? Now, I'm going to let this man finish. He's going to go through his five banks that are going to offer you $50,000 of credit. But I promise you, if you call those banks right after watching this video, they're going to lean more towards what I say and less towards what he had to say about how to actually get into that $50,000 of business credit, which you won't. 
stated income business credit cards. All right, number one, Chase Bank. Now, Chase Bank has business unsecured business credit cards. A lot of them come with 0% interest, which means you don't have to pay any interest on these credit cards for this limited amount of time. It can be six months, 12 months, 18 months, 21 months, 24 months. Just depend on that bank, depend on that financial institution. You better have a 720, probably even a 740 credit score before you even consider a 0% option from Chase or American Express or anybody like that with a substantial amount of credit that goes behind it. If you think you're gonna go to Chase online, put your information in with a 600 personal credit score and get $25,000 of open business credit with a 0% interest rate for 24 months, go hunt unicorns instead. You'd be better off. Chase is one of those banks. Now, the great thing about Chase and all the banks that I'm gonna give you today, which is a bonus, is that these banks report to the business credit bureaus. See, most people tell you to go to different banks to get these unsecured business credit cards that might be stated income business credit cards, but these banks are not reporting to the business credit bureau, so which means you're not building out a business credit profile or you're not building out a business credit score. If you go to Chase Bank and all the other banks that are, and the other four banks that I'm about to give you today, you're gonna build out a business credit profile, AKA you're gonna build out a business credit score. True. So you're killing two birds in one stone. So Chase is one bank, right? They report to Equifax Business, Experian Business, Dun & Brad, Small Business Financial Change, and Lexus Nexus. So you're killing it with Chase. Next we have Bank of America. So Bank of America is another bank where you can go get stated income business credit cards without showing little to no documentations. Once you fill out that business credit profile, I mean, sorry, once you fill out that business credit application, if your personal credit and your business credit profile is properly built out, you should be good to go. Right. So uh, Bank of America also reports to the small business financial chain. They also report to Dun and Brad. So you are building business credit profile and a business credit score with Bank of America. Next is PNC Bank, right? PNC Bank. PNC Bank also have stated income business credit cards. They also report to the business credit bureau like Experian Business. Also, they report to the small business financial chains and Dun and Brad. Next on the list is U.S. Bank, right? So U.S. Bank also reports to the Business Credit Bureau. Also, they have stated income business credit cards. Now, next on the list is one of my favorites is American Express, right? That's last on the list, American Express. So American Express definitely have 0% interest business credit cards. Also, they have stated income. All right, guys, so I'll let him go ahead and go through all the banks that will give you business credit cards that will also report to some of your business credit profiles, which was good information that he gave out. Now, what does not make sense is how it matches with the information he gave earlier in the video, because Chase, American Express, uh, Bank of America, PNC Bank, those are very difficult banks to procure high limit uh, open credit lines with if you do not have very and I mean very strong personal credit scores So when you're listening to these gurus always understand within the I don't even want to say lies But when within the omissions is always going to be mixed in a little bit of truth So I hope I was able to add a little bit of value to the video that he put up today uh, Or that he put up a while ago video has over 350,000 views I wanted to bring a little bit of clarity to the information that he was putting out there So I hope you guys like this video if you did feel free to go ahead and like subscribe Hit that notification bell so you guys can get alerts when anytime I release a video If you want me to do more reaction videos like this where I can clarify a little bit of the information that's being put out here by these guys I'll go ahead and do that. Send me the video that you want me to review. I'll go ahead and do a reaction to it. Put it back up on YouTube. Other than that, I hope you guys got some value out of this. And I can't possibly let you guys know how much I appreciate you. But I know that you can go get your credit information anywhere. But you're here with me. Be blessed.